How's it Jordan here? In this video I'm going to show you how to make simple on-screen controls using SpriteKit and Swift. Okay, so it's just basic player movements. Now the player isn't much, it's just a purple uh, shape node or a purple square but and it just moves across the screen but this could be any character, any object, anything really. And it's just quite nice little on-screen controls. So, without further ado, let's get started making this. Okay, I'm going to choose a template for my new project. I'm going to choose IRS and Game. I'm going to click Next and go On Screen Controls and choose Game Technology as Sprite Kit. I'm going to click Next and I'm going to click Create. Right, first I'm going to delete action.sks and delete uh, the hello label in game scene. And then I'm going to go to game view controller and delete the cno.entities and graphs. If I click to game scene again, I can just delete everything in here. And there we go, we have a nice clean scene now. So, next thing I'm going to do is well, let's just go assets or xe assets. Now you're going to need to download an assets folder from uh, kenny.nl and I've got the link to that site and the projects and the assets folder for uh, this on Kenny's site and you just need to download uh, the from the link I gave you and you're going to download a project called Kenny on screen controls. It's a really nice uh, folder with a bunch of assets for all different on-screen controls you might need and or use. Now we're going to use uh, one of them and I'm just going to get the folder open quickly. Right, you'll find yourself something like this. So I've got the Kenny on-screen controls folder here I downloaded. We have the license, the preview and sample.png. So I'm going to open sprites and I'm going to choose a flat dark. And we have all these different sprites. Uh, there we go, I can make it a bit bigger. So we, I'm going to, you can use any one of these really. Uh, I'm going to choose, for this tutorial, I'm going to use uh, the ones that are all connected, although you could use any sprite really. So I'm going to choose uh, this one, flat dark 08. So all I have to do is just drag it in my project folder now. Right, I've added the asset here. I'm going to drag it to 2x now. And we've got our uh, controller. Let's just call it controller. I'm going to go to game scene. And there we go. So I'm going to do a lot of the things in here with the UI. You could use the, the actual, uh, you could use the coding more for this. But I'm not going to use the coding because it's just quite nice to block out exactly where it's going to go where certain things are going to go. And I forgot, I'll go, go, go to our project, uh, our project and choose, first of all, I don't make it for iPhone. And for iPad, I'm going to do it only for landscape left and right. It just makes everything easier. I'm then going to go to game scene and I'm going to get my uh, controller. So let's go command shift L and go to our pictures and drag our controller in the scene. So the position is negative 389 and the Y is negative 225, I believe, 226, I think. There we go, now it's in quick size. Then the actual size, oh, position, sorry, now the size can be 180, okay, by 180. There we go, now we have our uh, little joystick. Let's just name it uh, controller. And there, we have a nice little controller for our scene. Next, I'm going to go uh, Command Shift L. And because there are no button objects in Sprite Kit, which I'm not, to be honest, really sure why they aren't any, but apparently they aren't. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go add a shape node. Okay. Go zoom in, change the full color, 
color to let's say this yellow okay i'm going to make it a bit smaller i believe the scale is 0 0.5 to what it usually is which is one i can zoom in let's say 0 0.7 there we go and just get to kind of roughly fit it can be a bit bigger though in fact a bit outside the bounds is actually usually quite good so just make sure it kind of fits there we go because there's also invisible so you'll never really see it but this actual part you're going to click so let's move it right there so I'll call this one and just name them things like up okay this is right and we have left uh, whoops that's down down and then we can add our left I'm gonna make this all appearance of our controller so that it all stays exact same position so if you want to move your controller around then it all follows it's like one big button which is really nice right so we'll keep those uh, temporary well not temporary but uh, just these objects here as uh, high opacity and alpha and everything and bright yellow for now I'm also going to just change select them all and again make the line width to uh, zero there we go now these have no little ugly outline line it just really bugs me a bit we can then go to our uh, game scene dot swift I'm going to go var okay we can have up is equal to false var down is equal to false uh, uh, far left is equal to false and then finally right is equal to false next I'm going to add an override and this is going to be a scene did load which is our starts function basically and I'm going to go uh, set the player which we can do a bit later so I'm going to add a override, okay, funk, and there's going to be touches began. Then I'm going to loop through every single uh, touch. So touch in touches, it auto completed for me. And I'm going to have a let pause is equal to touch dot location in self, which is the location in the scene. I'm going to go if nodes okay at so it gets all the nodes at that position and or at least the node at the position is really nice thing gives all of them but we're going to go dot first it's really useful for buttons and and checking if you clicked things and all sorts we go go dot first because it uh, gives us an array and as long as it's not a null which means we have just clicked in the air basically then it can run switch okay of all nodes at pause okay uh dot first not all of them actually sorry uh, this is going to be the node right uh, it's going to loop through all the the name of it and compare it to a bunch of different names okay whoops name okay dot lowercase just to make things easier okay next i'm going to have a case and we have all the different lowercase names of our different uh, buttons we have there. So if up, up is equal to true. Okay, case, down. Then uh, down is equal to true. Okay, and then I'm just going to copy paste this a bit. And this is going to be for all of the different parts. So we're going to have left and right. And then left again and right. There we go. Now we set it all. I've, whoops, I forgot to add the little, uh, I believe these are called colons. I'm not sure. I think they're called colons. There we go. There we go. It's a uh, switch must be exhaustive. So we can add um, missing cases. Whoops. So we're going to add a, a default okay this is for every other object you have if you clicked on any other objects in the scene we don't want to do something weird we just want to break 
So it is if you collect on some other item, like a collectible, let's say, or something like that. So it just doesn't worry about it. Right, then, uh, okay, I think we must add the end of our switch case. Uh, okay, let's see. Whoops, apparently we built outside our switch case a bit. There. Now we have our completed switch case for our names. And next what we're going to do is uh, for our touch ended, so we let go. Override, we can go override funk touches ended we can then go uh, just up as you could see false and the exact same thing is just I uh, just go up down left and right down left and right so up down left and right auto false right then we, what we can do is go to game scene and I'm going to add our little player controller. So I'm just going to add the shape node, which is our square. Full color can be any color you want. I'll do a system, uh, let's say purple. Okay, and line with the zero. And I'm going to name this player. Okay. Then I'm going to go to a game scene. And I'm going to go uh, var player is equal to sk and i believe this is called what is this called let's see uh shape node yes sk shape node okay there we go and just like this and then we can go player is equal to not node sorry another cool thing you can do is children with a name and we'll get a uh, child node with the name sorry and we'll get the child with the name player in this case which is one of the objects you made in the scene or you can also do it with the coding we'll get the object you did in coding as well we can do as okay and this is force unwrap okay so if it isn't uh, this type then it will give an error though sk shape node there we go and then we can finally go uh, funk update. Okay, there we go. We can go player. Actually, first, if up, okay, is true, then we want player dot position dot y plus equals by ten. Okay, I can just copy this for down, but there's going to be an else if. And there we go. There. Now we can else if, and we'll copy this exact thing for left and right. So left and right. And for right, it is x is plus, and for left, x is minus. So I'm not going to make it minus equals because uh, I think it's a bit ugly. I'll just make it plus by negative 10. For some reason that makes a bit more sense to me, I'm not sure why. There we go, now we have our update function now, and it should all work. Uh, I don't think there are any errors with it. So, let's press play, and let's see. So it's just building, and there we go. Okay, it's a bit broken, but uh, because the control is out of bounds for some reason. Okay, let's fix this. Let's go game scene, go to our controller. I have no idea why I decided to be out of bounds right now. Now let's try and fix this. Uh, if we make height to uh, 1334 and width to, I believe, what is it, 750? Yes, yeah, 750. There we go. Now let's see if it works. And it, yes, it works a bit better. And now, as you see, the left and right are flipped, but apart from that, it does work. And that's easy enough to fix. Just go game scene. Obviously, I accidentally did something a bit wrong. Oh, yes, as you see here, this should be left. There. And right is always plus by 10. 
There we go. Now we have a little player controller. Now, uh, before you leave, you may notice that, well, everyone will notice the big, ugly yellow blocks behind it. And a good way to fix that is to go Xcode. So uh, just choose one of these that has a black and then slash and then add white. So just choose, I believe it's, what did I use? I just choose, uh, I believe I use system full color, uh, something like that. And it's completely transparent then. So if we press play now, it should still work. And there we go. Nice. Now we have a little player controller. Uh, so obviously it doesn't look very much visually, but this is quite powerful for uh, any mobile game. But yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, if you have any ideas for videos you want to see, then please write them down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next one. Bye.